It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. And welcome to a series. Uh, I guess we could call this an uncorking. We're gonna we're gonna pop open all three. But but Sarah, what are we looking at here? You ready for this mouthful? Uh huh. This is the Thomas S. Moore Extended Cask Finishes. All right, Sarah, so we have a port, a Chardonnay, and a Cabernet Sauvignon wow. finish. Somebody well, doesn't drink a lot of wine. Act like you've been here before. Well, <laughs> a little, they're, they're, they're finding me out. Oh. <laughs> um, where do you want to start on these? These are all extra, extra finish. We'll get into that in a second, but which one of these three expressions do you want to start with? So normally I would go by proof, uh -huh. but because they're all roughly within three points of each other, I actually want to go um, what I would say like wine finished um, intensity. So I think I want to start with the Chardonnay and then move to the reds. So this one is 97.9 proof. These are all supposed to be around $70 retail, but we picked up all three of ours for $74.99. 75 each. 75 each. Not all three of them for 75. Oh, that, that would be nice. That would be a deal, right? And these are from the uh, Barton 1792 Distillery. Pause for cork pop though. So as you said, this one's a Chardonnay finish. It's 97.9 proof, uh, finished in Chardonnay casks. And because it's extended, uh, this one actually got four years it's in there. It's the extended cut. Which I don't think I've ever had anything finished in a Chardonnay cask for that long. So Sarah, since this was in a Chardonnay cask for four years, does that mean Zack Snyder directed it? <laughs> wow. Is it the Zack Snyder cut of Thomas <laughs> Anyways, I can't think of any other Chardonnay finished. Uh, for mm. some reason, I want to say maybe Fourgate had something. Yeah, I think Chardonnay, you might but be I can't right. remember exactly. So typically, your finished stuff are in the finishing barrel for about 12 months to 18 months. Is sort of like your typical. Sometimes it can be down to six, six months. Six months, yeah. Four years. Four years is a long time. Like how th these are non-age stated, so I, I would like to know the age of the bourbon before it went in there. That would be nice. Mm. Uh, so we don't have that information, but Chardonnay is more of a mild wine, I well, think. this is a mild so, nose. I'm getting some honey. Yeah, some I get tea, a little green apple. Some green, yeah. Mostly honey, tea, green little apple. Perfume, little perfume, little perfume. Yeah, floral. Hmm, all right. <laughs> Whoa, hey, a little kick. There's a little kick. That's interesting. Again, I'm not a huge Chardonnay person, so I'm also kind of trying to figure out which parts are the bourbon and which parts are the finish. And not that I need to pick them apart. It doesn't really matter. He's I don't know if he's happy with what's going on. I can feel the faces. Well, if you're not a Chardonnay drinker, then I'm definitely not a Chardonnay drinker. What this first brought to mind for me, Sarah, was uh, champagne. The bubbles, the effervescence, if you will, of a, champ a champagne. I'm getting oaky, toasty, but there's also some citrus. Not a super long finish. I was ready to go back for that second sip pretty quickly. Yeah, some toasted elements. Yeah. It's a little sharp. It is a little sharp. Going down the gullet, it's a little sharp. And that's probably that wine influence, if I had to guess. I wish that I had more experience with Chardonnay so that I could describe <laughs> what I think that is doing. Personally, I like an unoaked Chardonnay because I like more, like if I'm gonna drink white wine, it's gotta be hot outside. I want something mm. clean, crisp, mm -hmm. light, not too sweet. And oaky Chardonnays tend to get a little too buttery and rich for me and like, Mm, I'm just, I want something more clean and crisp. Coming from a not a wine drinker here, but I would kind of call this a sort of a crisp flavor. Sort of sharp like a tart apple, you know, something like that. It just, yeah. it, it, it's really bright on the tongue, but the finish is almost non-existent. I mean, it's really quick. It's over like it's that. It's very light. Very light. I don't know. I'm not loving it at this point. I did really like the Woodenville, so I'm curious to see yeah. maybe how those stack up against each other. But I do want to, what's the goal here? Are we going to pick our favorite one of the series? Or yeah, are we just going to give them a I think yes, we'll, no, yes? Well, or? I think we'll set it aside. Okay. We'll go to the next one. At the end, we'll come back. We'll do a yes, no for all of them. And we'll also say what our favorite was. So let's go ahead and move on. What do you want to do second? Now, because we're in red wine world, I think we're okay to go by proof. So I say let's go with the cab finish next. That's the 95.3. I need a glass as well. You do. 
Wow. No one cares about that as much as you. <laughs> you always have to have alternating uh, logos. Where can you get these, Sarah? I'll tell you. Whiskeyambitions.com. It's our home on the internet for our Glen Karens, our Copitas, our Rocks glasses, our t shirts, uh, and more things, our sweatshirts and so forth. More coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And while you're out there browsing, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And you'll get after the episode exclusives and all kinds of fun stuff. Let's get some Cabernet. Now you're a Cab fan. You're a big red blend and I like and Cab fan. Yeah, I like, uh, and and for me, of the wines, me too. Sure, I, yeah, bigger, bolder reds. Um, I'm not so. I used to be super into just Cabs. Now I like red blends that have a little bit more umph to them. Sure. Um, cabs nice with dinner. I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's wine night now. Um, let's see what you think about a. Cabernet finished for, this one is two and a half years. So this is actually the lowest, that's still a hell of a amount of time yeah. to be finished. Uh, two and a half years is what this one rested in that X Cabernet Savion barrel. I'm getting some like dark cherry, dark grape, and then also a little floral. I get like some- yeah, Like dark berry. Yeah, dark berry or uh, almost like dates or uh, figs plums, plums, figs, yeah. prune even, dark, and get a little bit of prune. Dark fruit, stone fruit. Mm-hmm. Quite a contrast. Yeah, very. Quite a contrast. I feel like the red wine with this one, it's almost like with the first one, the Chardonnay and the bourbon were competing a little bit more. And with this one, I'm feeling like the red wine finish is kind of like filling in. Mm-hmm with the bourbon, so it, they'd feel more cohesive versus like going head to head. The proof is nice. Yeah. It's mild. Big you know. rush of grape mm. there. I, bordering on a little overwhelming on that first sip. Let's see what number two does. Sometimes with these, the toasty notes kind of almost border on a burnt keratin finish. Uh. I don't know, any anyone who files their nails out there knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> This one, it's not a ton of it. Like I really like super rich and oily mouthfeels and things like that whenever it comes to the finishing stuff. Um, maybe I'm wanting it to be finished for longer. Still though, I feel longer. like- Longer, wow. Two and a half years is a long time, but I I guess I just love wine so much. I really want like that juicy, rich wine. Yeah. No. I mean, this one's definitely heartier than the last one. For sure. I definitely prefer this. I do prefer this. I'm sort of missing the bourbon in here. Yeah, I feel like we're ending on a more of a wine finish uh -huh. than a bourbon finish. I feel like after two sips, and I'll give it another one here, but I kind of feel like the the wine is being more predominant than the bourbon. Third sip, that keratin talk that you were talking about. <laughs> I, 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 I see, well, I see where you're coming from. It's not like, it's not the first thing that pops in the mind, but it's, it's a note that kind of sneaks up for me in some of these that I'm just always like, oh, you gotta watch out for that. It's very, very like back low, whatever in the background, but it is something that I noticed. I do want to see, I think I want to taste all three and then go back and make an assessment because I feel like this might need a little bit of time as yeah. well. So I'm gonna give yeah. it a minute mm -hmm. and then we'll move on to the port. Let's move on to the port. 98.9 .9 proof. Ruby port. Three years in that Ruby port barrel, yeah, so. Nice. I'll say like the color on these is really nice. Yeah. I'm hit or miss on port finishes. Like sometimes I really like it and sometimes I really don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually not a huge fan of, we're talking about Barton 1792. I'm actually not a huge fan of their port finish 1792. So I'm very curious to see how this one goes over. Mm -hmm. That is a pungent nose. I don't know what else to say else about it. Is it is like, it almost nose is like, a really, really high quality old fashioned, like a really good spirit with a Luxardo cherry and like just a tiny bit of, of sugar or bitters. It's like really dark and rich, but okay. it's almost making my mouth water. Like I want that drink now. Uh, I'm getting a lot of like well, the caramel and the cherry. That's a better description from what I'm getting. I'm sort of still in that like hair care product. Really? Oh, um, I feel that yeah. this has moved farther away. Also, I just did my hair, so <laughs> well, there you go. maybe it's that. Maybe. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Thomas S. More. Again, a real <laughs> rush to the palate. Nice no, but this oaky. one's this one's a little dry though. It is a little dry. Mm -hmm. It actually made me. This is the first one I've been like. Mm. Water. Yeah. 
Okay, none of these, none of these are really giving you a, a hug or a very long finish. I'm thinking though that's a product of the proof that we're sitting at and maybe they've been mellowed out a bit by the wine. Yeah, there's some, some rich grape. Uh, I like that. And really I'm just reminded of wine. I mean, I think that is the result of it being in that barrel for three years. It picked up a lot of those qualities. So instead of like the elements that make up wine or it, the bourbon and the wine flavoring creating a new thing that we pick up on, it's just like, this tastes like wine. <laughs> I'm just getting the notes of Chardonnay. Of Chardonnay? Of not Chardonnay. Of port. Of port. You know what I mean. At some point though, you have to ask like, is that the, isn't the that the point that it's the wine complementing the bourbon that's the, the that, goal. That's the whole thing. I don't feel like it's a compliment. I feel like it's an overpower. Uh, it's it's predominant, the finishing hmm. barrel flavors versus that nice uh, approachable marriage of the spirit and the finishing spirit. Well, I mean, spirit. if we're assessing it that way, I don't know that any of these three does that well. Agreed. It really mm. just depends on how you're evaluating. Well, I'm sure. You know what though, I do like the shape of yeah, these bottles. Yeah, the bottles are great. Bottles are beautiful. Bottles, bottles are great. You know, I'm sure with them going two and a half to four years in the finishing barrel, they were going for a flavor that is unlike other finished whiskeys out there. And if that was their uh, goal, I think they hit it. Mm -hmm. This doesn't taste like finished things that we've had from Woodenville, from Barstown Bourbon Company, from. Angels Envy, Jefferson's, you know, places oh, yeah. like that. Gosh. It's There's a lot of finishes out in the game right now. Yeah. And this is definitely the most secondary spirit forward, I would say. Would you mm. agree with that? Of everything we've had, the most wine forward? No, I don't think so. Hmm. I think we've had one, ones that are very, it just tastes like juice. And those are typically lower priced products too. But I'm somewhere in the middle of what you're saying. Okay, let's bring them back in, in the order that we, the reverse order that we tasted. So here was our latest, our middle, and our first. I really think I'm between these two right here. Uh, I agree. These two. I'm definitely leaning to the reds, but that's not a surprise for me. But going back, I actually really like the nose on, on this guy, on the Chardonnay. Have you noticed the Chardonnay again? I mean, it still has oh, that yeah. green apple, but it's like a brown sugar, green apple. Brown like. sugar has shown up now and I'm getting mm, more- A little syrupy. More bourbon actually. Yeah. Out of the nose. Ooh, I like this nose. I might have to take back what I said about the port having the best nose because this nose is actually really nice. I think the port is my least favorite nose. Whoa, okay. Yeah. I think these also definitely needed to open up a bit and we yes. probably need to revisit them on a live yes. again um, now that they've been opened. Okay, well let's- Because even in just sitting gonna, here, my opinion has changed. Yeah, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to that uh, Chardonnay. Ooh, still tart. It is tart. Whoa. It is like a little apple tart. Hot, hot in a weird way. It's not as balanced as I would hope it would be based on the nose. I really like yeah. that nose. Mm, this one has more like toasty marshmallow notes than back, the cab. Yeah, back on the cab. I also was just thinking it's the most balanced. Yeah, I'm getting some of the whiskey in there. It also probably doesn't hurt that of wines, Cabernet is one of our one of our favorites. That's true. But it, it, it seems to like, the, the the Chardonnay is the most like tart and just an, an odd combination with whiskey, I, I feel like. I, I feel like there's a very sweet spot and maybe, yeah. but again, anecdotal, we don't make one. In my mind, bourbon. when we think about flavors that go together, I would never on my own put white wine and bourbon right. together. Like yeah. that to me doesn't, I see how where they're going for, but that that's not something that I think feels natural. And then where the port is just so dark Still, in my opinion, a little overpowering. It's a little harsh, not proof wise, but just like that um, dark stone fruit, like prune type of. Yeah, I am getting a lot sharpness. more of like those dark stone fruits and a dryness. Yeah. With an acidity. I thought this one initially was my favorite, but the more I come back to it, actually, Ooh. the more that I'm going uh -huh. here as yeah. well. Yeah. This is crazy. I think this is the most that I've ever flip-flopped in an episode. <laughs> like, I was like, well, this is my favorite nose. This is my favorite nose. No, this is my favorite nose. And this one's okay. No, wait, no, it's not. And I like this one. Wait, wait, maybe I don't. And <laughs> Actually, I still think this is my favorite nose. This is still um, my favorite nose, but I think this one all around. Of the three, 
uh, final answer. Cab. You say? Yes, yeah. I agree. Okay. I think it's the most balanced. I feel like the wine sort of fills in the whole not the holes, but like the gaps with the bourbon, and they're the most well-balanced and the most complimentary mm. versus in these two, the wine is competing more. I agree. Now, that being said, mm -hmm. if this is our favorite right. of the three, mm -hmm. what about that $75 price tag? The MSRP, they say on the website, it's actually 70, 70, but we got this for 74, 75.99, so $76 actually. I would almost, want to pay the 130 and get the Barstown Bourbon Company prisoner finish myself, then pay 76 and have something that I enjoy, but not something that I love. I hate to hate. <laughs> but I gotta be honest with you, I like so many other things from 1792 Distillery. I like this, but 70 dollars msrp 76 what we paid is a lot yeah um for where this is at now i see why we get it it's ding for the you know double it's got the finish it was in there for an extra long time i get that totally get it and respect it i would just expect this one to go a little farther um just a little farther i don't know it's close it's so close but yeah if i was gonna buy one of these again It'd be this guy. However, I would like it if it was more around the $50 mark. How do you feel? I feel like if you're a Cabernet wine fan and you've had other cab finished whiskeys that you've enjoyed and you normally hang out in this price range or it's not unheard for you to buy something that's $76, I would say go ahead and get it because I feel like it's worth that roll of the dice that you're probably going to either like it or really like it. Yeah. Probably not completely just hate it. So I would say go ahead and, and do that. For me, I would still spend that extra money. I feel like it's worth it to get something that I really love than just something that I like well enough. Well, I don't, and I, again, I do agree with you. However, the thing that we're not considering in that conversation is that prisoner wine finish is not, it was a limited release. It's not available. You can't walk in anywhere and buy it any day. So, Correct. These are also limited, though. That's right. And These are the do, 2020 collection. Mm, and they're going to do new releases every year. Yeah, so the finishing barrel will change. Okay. Well, that next being year. said, <laughs> in next year, when they come out with their new series, will we buy them again? I think we will. We will to review because them. Because we want to review them. And I want to see how they progress over time. Like, I'm very intrigued. Yes. If this is our starting point, I think this is a good starting point. I mm -hmm. am interested to see where we go with it. I would love it if, like, next year one of them is a rum finished. <gasps> Ooh, I would be down I for do, that. So I, like I think rum. it completely depends on what those cognac? finishing barrels are. If it's some other variation of a port barrel, probably not. But no, yeah, I, I would say I'm, I'm kind of sideways on this one. On Grain of salt for us on these two. Yeah, these two I'm a little more... I don't like Chardonnay, admittedly. I usually have a bad track record with port. There you go. It was fun. It was fun, and that's where we'll leave it. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to us already, we'd love to have you. You can click right up here. There's suggestions of other videos right down here. We hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, drink more finished whiskey.